Myocide is ossificans. Myo refers to a muscle and ossify is to calcify or to form a bone. Therefore, myocide is ossificans refers to a benign process that is characterized by heterotrophic ossification, usually within the large muscles, or formation of a normal bone tissue in a normal muscle. It comprises of two syndromes, thus the non-hereditary myositis ossificans, typically known as myositis ossificans. And this calcification occurs at the site of the injured muscle, most common in the arms or in the quadriceps of the thighs. And the second one is myositis ossificans progressiva, or fibrodysplasia ossificans progressive. This is an inherited autosomal dominant pattern in which calcification occurs without an injury and in a predictable pattern. Myositis ossificans is essentially a metaplasia of the intramuscular connective tissue resulting in an extra osseous bone formation that is without inflammation. It has zonal organization in that it has three zones, that is the peripheral or a well-organized mature lamellar bone, intermediate osteoid region, and the central immature non-ossified cellular focus or fibroblasts. The differential diagnosis for these mouse cities ossificans will be rostral osteosarcoma, soft tissue sarcomas including a malignant fibrous histocytoma, synovial sarcoma. Mouse cities ossificans usually presents with pain, tenderness, focal swelling, joint muscle reduction in the aftermath of a painful muscle contusion, and rarely it is asymptomatic and diagnosed from radiographs that are taken incidentally. Most ossifications arise in the thigh or the arm and are predisposed to by early return of activity after an injury. Other sides of this ossification include the intercostal spaces, erector spina, pectoralis muscles, gluteae, and the chest. When a severe injury within the hematoma is recognized, it is important to splint the extremity to avoid excess activity. If further trauma causes recurrent injury, ossification may reach a spectacular proportion and resemble an osteosarcoma. Healthy densities are sometimes noted one month after the injury, while the lesser opacities eventually may not be apparent until two months have passed. The treatment is initially a conservative and some patients' calcification will spontaneously be reabsorbed and others will have minimal symptoms. Disability is a grade with local swelling and heat together with extreme pain upon the slightest motion of the adjacent joint. The limb should be rested with the knee in extension of the elbow in a 90 degrees of flexion until the local reaction has subsided. After local heat and tenderness have decreased, gentle active exercise may be initiated, but passive stretching exercises are not indicated because they may stimulate ossification reaction. Use of indomethacin to reduce pain and inflammatory reaction can be employed in these patients. And excise excessive bone tissue if it interferes with the muscle function and once the reaction is mature. Surgery should not be attempted before 9 months to 1 year after the injury because it may restart the process and lead to even more severe reaction. In your diagnosis, you use brain radiographs of non-hereditary myositis ossificans circumscripta. Early examination may be unremarkable in these patients, and follicular calcified density is observable in soft tissues at about 2 to 6 weeks from the onset. By the 6 to 8 week, calcification becomes sharply circumscribed, and ossification tends to appear with a periosteum. Obtain a radiograph to distinguish between myositis ossificans and osteogenic sarcoma. In osteogenic sarcoma, calcification extends centrifugally to the periphery, while in myositis ossificans, calcification first occurs in the periphery of the soft tissue mass. Myositis ossification calcification occurs in association with the bone's diaphysis, unlike osteogenic sarcoma where calcification is associated with the metaphysis. Myositis ossificans presents as a rapid enlargement and a significant pain one to two weeks after the injury. And the patient has a swelling and a warm side as well as an increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate 
and selum alkaline phosphatase. The clinical picture differs from that of osteosarcoma as the pain from myositis ossificans decreases as time goes on where osteosarcoma pain increases. Myositis ossificans appears on a brain film at approximately 2 to 4 weeks after the injury. Then the lesion begins to calcify at the periphery and works to the center. And at the less than 3 weeks for stroma, bones can demonstrate increased uptake in the area. Osteosarcoma calcifies at the center, continues to the periphery, and CT scan helps us delineate the central radiolucency surrounded by a dense periphery. On gross examination, myositis ossificans has a shell of bone and a soft red brown center. The mass may be attached to the bone by a stack or might be in the continuum with the periosteum. Alternatively, the mass may be attached only to the muscle. Microscopically, myositis ossificans appears different at the periphery and at the center. Acutely, there is a proliferation of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells that infiltrate the muscle tissue. At approximately 2 to 3 weeks, osteoid production begins at the periphery and the fibrous tissue begins to form around the shell. And the center of the lesion will be an irregular mass of immature fibroblasts. Then moving towards the edge, there will be the islands of disorganized osteoid. At the edge of the lesion, trabecular or the lamella and a woven bone are present. There may be a cartilage component as well. And this process is in contrast to osteosarcoma whereby the calcification begins at the center of the lesion.